Jujutsu Kaisen is an anime that has a very, very thriving fandom. Thriving and, and thirsty fandom. It's thriving. <laughs> Because they're thirsty, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so, here, the thing Gorgeous about... Gorgeous a tall glass of drink, isn't he? And welcome back to the Base Indonesian Talks. Today with me, I have a proud daughter of Indonesia. Allow me to introduce to you guys, Miss Ab, Miss, sorry, Mrs. Mrs. Abigail Limuria. 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 Yeah. Oh, because I think, oh yeah, there is, I, I thought there's an N in the middle of your name. Do you want to redo it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Proud daughter of Indonesia, Mrs. Abigail Lemuria. There you go. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself to the folks watching at home? Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Abigail Lemuria. Uh, I'm the co-founder of What Is Up Indonesia, or for short, WeWe, we, and also the co-initiator of Bijak Memilih. There you go. There you have it, guys. This is the gal right here, the legend herself. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gassing you up too much. Anyways. Okay. Okay. So today we're gonna talk about like uh, memes. Uh, Cause mm -hmm. the thing is like, uh, I noticed that you talk about politics a lot. Well, to be honest, it's pretty much your forte, right? Politics, you know, infographics and all of that. Sure. Okay, Probably, yeah, there you maybe. go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, I think we should talk about politics again, <laughs> but this time from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about pop culture mm -hmm. and memes in politics. Mm -hmm. Cuz the thing is like, um kita semenjak kayak uh, Oh, we're going to mix Indonesian yeah. and English. Okay. Yeah, we can mix like Indonesian and English. Nice. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, as you are comfortable. Right. But anyways, kayak kita tuh semenjak uh, pemilu 2000, apa ya, 2019, mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of voters, they're like uh, millennials and Gen Zs, right? People who are exposed to uh, modern pop culture yeah. uh, through globalization and the uh, uncontrollable stream of information. Social media. Social media as well. And so, in a way, uh, maybe politics is something that is so nuanced in the minds of millennials and mm -hmm. Gen Zs that one of the ways that they could understand it is through establishing patterns, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that they can, you know, one of the things that they can relate to is, well, you know, pop culture, anime, mm -hmm. media, movies, and in general, right? Yep. And especially in the uh, in this, uh, I, I wouldn't say this, tapi kayak apa nih? Baru baru beberapa hari yang lalu kan udah selesai kan ya pemilu ya? Iya yeah, uh, udah. Like like roughly kan, a month ago. Iya yeah, kan nggak dua ronde. Iya yeah. iya yeah, nggak dua ronde ya. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, uh, but to be honest, like two rounds, that's gonna be a lot of fun, don't you think? Yeah, of yeah, course. man. Lots yeah. of money more, being burned. More money, more memes. Yeah, more money for us. <laughs> for you. Okay, for me, yeah. For you. More Some work for me. Oh, more work for you. Yeah, so I'm kind of indifferent. Wait, so work does not equate money for you? No, I mean, Bijak Mamili is not for profit. Ah, I see, I see. It's a non profit organization. You can't make a platform like Bijak Mamili for profit. That's insane. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. You are right. I see, I see, I see. Truly, uh,. The altruist right here, ladies and gentlemen. No, it just doesn't make sense if you think about it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense because a lot of interest gets poured in. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. But as I was as I was saying, uh, in this previous no, not previous election, this election yep. in 2023, 2024, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people have been making parallels towards uh, uh, politics and uh, pop culture, yep. and especially like. You can see in the memes like Naruto, yep. fucking Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah, it's insane, man. And I'd like to discuss more about that, right? And your thoughts regarding that. Because yeah. I think, in a way, it is pretty amusing, but sometimes it could get downright. 
I tripped on my tongue. <laughs> it could get downright cringe at times. For you? Yeah. Okay. From me. What do you think of it? I think what you said in the beginning was true, right? That politics, for I mean, Indonesia with democracy and politics were, were very new. And for the general human population, politics is also pretty new. Like it's not natural for us to think in terms of politics. Like politics arise because mm-hmm. of civilization, right? And so the thing about democracy is that we get to be governed by who gets the most vote. Mm-hmm. Therefore, everyone needs to be literate in politics for us to have a working democracy. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone, because yeah. everyone vote matters. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so the the game it, it's a game of numbers. Therefore, we need to get as many people to be literate in politics. Mm. But politics is so foreign, it's complicated, it's abstract, not a lot of people have time to learn about it, not a lot of people have the capacity to learn about it. Yeah, and unfortunately. So, unfortunately, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we need everyone to be literate in yeah. politics, that's, yeah. the rea- not, not, that's the not, reality. Not to be patronizing, but a lot of people do not have the uh, fundamentals, you know, to yeah, understand yeah, yeah. politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because it is, it is complicated, it's, yeah. it's not easy, and it took me a while to learn about politics myself, mm. right? And so I think um, first, a lot of people try to learn or try to teach others Mm -hmm. through uh, references Mm -hmm. that are familiar to them. Because that's how you learn new concepts, right? Mm, You use metaphors, you use examples, that kind of allegories. Allegories that have parallels somewhat to the the real thing that you're talking about. And so I think that's an entry point. And whether it's good or bad, I think for me right now Mm -hmm. at this stage, I feel like it's still good because again, it's a numbers game. The more people who are literate in politics, the better. Mm -hmm. And to get to political literacy, we need to get people to be interested first to Mm, learn. Because if people are not interested, Mm -hmm. you can produce the coolest, most sound, accurate research or video or whatever Mm. or content. Nobody's going to watch or read it, right? And that's going to be for nothing. Percuma Mm, aja gitu. Kayak, lu bikin konten sebagus mungkin. So... Akurat mungkin, gak ada yang nonton, gak ada yang baca, mm. ibuat eh, apa gitu. So the first competition or challenge to overcome is to get people to be interested first. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the whole. I, I would like to establish parallels between how uh, Indonesians these days would learn politics from relating it to pop culture. Yeah. To uh, how did you know uh, Wali Songo? Yes. The uh, the nine the nine or. 13 or 15 or 20 god knows how many how many, how many <laughs> yeah, islamic yeah, yeah. sages that comes uh, that comes to indonesia to spread islam mm-hmm. the way they proleticize prol- proleticize i think that's the right word Pro- democratize de- no not not democratize Lo- but more like they i know i, I know it localize they s- localize yeah, yeah they socialize and localize islam is through the use of uh, javanese uh, traditions, exactly. customs, yeah. and uh, and culture, exactly. you know, through music, through plays, through clothes, like something simple as the clothes. And uh, this is one of the things about Indonesia is that the way you could you could penetrate the, uh, you can get people to understand uh, a certain a certain uh, what do you call that a certain concept or uh, or a field is if you penetrate to what relates to them the most mm-hmm. we are simplistic creatures yeah, yeah so we uh, we find we learn something that relates to us most yeah and I feel in this uh, in this capacity it fe- you know it's it's through memes yeah, yeah. Practically through memes. Yeah, because especially yeah. like when we go back to statistic, the the majority of voters are young people. Yes, young this people. This year, right? Mm-hmm. And most young people, they have they use social media day to day, and the usage of social media day to day create their own entire new culture, yeah. subculture, yeah, yeah, language, subculture. and jokes and memes and stuff like that. And so it makes so much sense for us to use those references that they are most familiar with to engage them in politics and that's why like and it's not just like the education or education platform like Bijak Mili or WeWe that are using that like we see politicians themselves mm. are using pop culture references yeah right? because that it, it's just it just makes sense you need to there is I feel like for some people people feel like oh these 
section of knowledge or things are way too scholarly and too Scholastic, high. Yeah. Terlalu tinggi lah untuk bahasa mm. internet gitu. Or some internet language and jokes are too yeah. crude for us to engage in. Yeah. And I feel like that divide are irrelevant because when your goal is to be effective and it's a numbers game, right? Yeah, it's a, in the end, democracy is just about being popular as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, so like, uh, as we were talking about like memes in mm-hmm. politics, like, do you have like a certain uh, meme that you would like to, you know, to apa ya kayak? Lu ada kayak suatu contoh nggak sih? Kalau kalau misalkan gua rata-rata contohnya sih, like most of my examples is just Naruto. Right. Yeah, because that's like the that's like the. the The thing that most boys and girls of our great country of Indonesia watches back when they were yeah, young, yeah, yeah. right? I unfortunately yeah. did not watch. It. Oh, uh, did you, know. you grow up here? I did, oh. I did but <laughs> I'm just I just never got around to watching it. Oh, I know I, I, I missed it, but it's like everywhere though. I, I bet it's great. Oh, yeah. were you a uh, so uh, you know? There's a term called a uh, late bloomer, right? Are you a late bloomer, weep? No, I just never got around. Oh, I you've watch, never got around. I watch around. like niche weird among. I I read like the niche one. Oh, like, like what? Card Captor Sakura. No, like I wa- I read like my first uh, manga is Detective Q. Like it's Detective Q. I've never you've never heard even of heard of it. it. I've right? never heard of like, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so obsessed. Like it was so good. Yeah. And it it got adapted to anime, but. You know like how what they do after like first yeah. season it's Detective not successful and then they like Yeah I I I watched uh Yakitate Japan. Oh, I know Yakitate uh, Japan. It's Those it's are, the bread one, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hate bread, but that was you like one bread. of my first introduction. But you like bread because of that. I still hate bread. You I still don't like bread. I don't like the taste. I like reading okay. about people making uh, bread. Making I guess. bread. Yeah, I see, There I, see, I, see, I see. So yeah, I but I didn't grow up watching or reading Naruto. Damn. Truly niche things. You are, <laughs> just, you. I guess you are an avant-garde then, an avant-garde yeah, weave. I guess. Either that, or I just have the randomest access to manga when I was a kid. I guess. Oh, why do you think you have like the randomest uh, access to manga? No, because I, I just read whatever is available around me. Oh right? yeah, because back then, like, wait, how old are you now? I'm 29. You're 29. So back then, like. You were you grew up in the age where Gramedia, Toko Gunung Agung, yes. all of that were the main first source still, of manga. Yes, ah, but I yeah, yeah, yeah. but my first introduction to manga was I think my cousin who recommend like I don't know why my cousin would recommend Detective Q to mm. like a 10 year old girl because that thing's pretty gruesome. Gruesome. Yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not very curious about it. Like I know we're I know. verging out a topic, but I'm kind of curious about it. No, uh, it's Okay. Detective Q? I I read it when I was a kid. Yeah. And in my mind, it was the greatest most mind-blowing story ever, right? Are you, are you but this, I this Yeah, this yes, one? yes. Bro, like I dream about it, but but then like now I don't know if I reread it, I would still have the same impression. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like, is it the most sophisticated story? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, I think it's because it's like this. Uh, I mean, uh, back to like relating things to memes again, right? I keep on seeing memes and posts around social media saying that we grew up from the characters that we relate to the most. Okay. So like say. A lot of people, uh, they grew up watching like a certain anime, and the anime is, uh, you know, the main characters of that age, their age. Mm. But then you grow up from that, and then you start seeing things from a different perspective. Probably another character, probably an adult inside that, uh, inside that media, and probably even the villain, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so yeah, so like that's why, uh, that's why you grew up relating to things. Maybe that's the reason why a lot of man, uh, a lot of mangas and animes these days are geared towards adults, because they know their main fan base Has is cool. diversifying, and yeah. most of them, the ones that like got them the most amount of views and shit, they're growing up. They don't watch stuff like. Doraemon anymore. If there is something like Doraemon, they probably watch Doraemon for the nostalgia value. Maybe. Yeah. So back to the memes, right? Yeah. So uh, what kind of memes do you like come across to in the Indonesian? The election. The elections, yeah. There's a lot. Um, the I mean, okay, right now I I'm seeing because the live action avatar, 
like was released by Netflix. Mm-hmm. A lot of pe- so it, this is kind of like post election, I guess. Yeah, post election. A lot of people are drawing another similarities between several of the characters, like. Ira and Zuko with yeah. Prabowo yeah, and yeah, yeah. Gibran because yeah yeah well, well, why do you think so maybe you, I, you you you're the one who says like the yang pinggir pinggir jurang so oh, yeah, tell me why uh, so who's Prabowo again like Ira yeah. well I don't I don't really see Prabowo as Ira whoever made that cocok okay. right you know? this, uh, right what they yeah. said was like Ira was he he was he's a war criminal. Who got, who who now everybody loves because he's a cute, cuddly grandpa. Ah, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. And he's traveling with uh, Zuko, who is the son of the Fire Lord. Yeah, <laughs> he's a war criminal. So I, I mean, like sometimes the similarity are only like surface level, like that. Yeah, surface but, level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my my opinion towards that is that whoever made that cocok logi, they need to have their IQs checked. Like they would literally. Why? Because they would just literally force everything, you know, that has the same pattern. Oh my God, he's he's fat and cute, and then let's get him here. And the fact that Iroh is a war criminal, right? Mm. But the thing is, how do we know he if he's actually a war criminal? It's a state of war. You I- will only know if you're a war criminal if there is a apa kalau misalkan udah selesai perang baru. Baru ketahuan kalau misalkan yeah. dia war criminal kan. Yeah, yeah. Baru di situ nanti di di they will define if you're a war criminal right. or not. So in the state of war, you can't really. Well, he. Iroh committed genocide. He committed genocide. If I'm not mistaken, in the uh, in the fire in the fire nation in the fire nation royal family, mm. the only one that committed ge- genocide was Sozin, right? Azulon mm. and Iroh, they were they were only generals in the field. They were just yeah, they commanded it. <laughs> they commanded it, right? And I think Iroh they wiped the. They, air yes, nomad. Sozin. Sozin wiped out the air nomad. Yeah. He's a war criminal. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, the war he's, criminal. Well, but Iroh's uh, involved in it. Iroh, Iroh wasn't even born yet, because Azulon. What? Yeah, because like Azulon back then was uh, Sozin was Please like. Spoiler alert. Yeah, Sozin was like 80 years old or 100 years old, right? And Iroh would have been a kid, and Azulon right. would have been like a young adult or whatever. But I think he he led some. Army. I I forgot. I we watched could, it. Like, I mean, yeah, like yeah. Iro. Like you know, knowing what the Fire Nation does, sure. we could say we could say okay, that Iro committed right, right, war sure. crimes, right? Mm-hmm. But we don't know for sure. The reason why we call him a war criminal is the fact that he besieged Ba Sing Se, right? right? Which is like the Earth Kingdom, right. the good guys. But then in like the Avatar: Legend of Korra, we learn that the good guys are not really the good guys. I, I haven't watched that. Oh, you haven't watched that? I see, well, I, I mean, it's always that's that's a good. Good fictions are always like that, right? Yeah, like, good fictions blur the lines of mm-hmm. morality, you know. Yeah. yeah, a lot of politics going on. Yep, yep, yep. But yeah, uh, they would literally just like shove everything. Into, I mean, it's amusing. It's yeah, yeah it's amusing. It's fun. Don't get me wrong, it's another, amusing. Yeah, another one was yeah. um, when Bijak Mumili, so our website, when we were still uh, testing our um, UI UX. Yeah. For the presidential candidates, uh-huh. and that was before the KPU announcement of the the their numbers uh-huh. and things like that, like urutane. Yeah. So we were just like um, playing around with the design, and so we placeholder those those names and pictures uh-huh. with Jujutsu characters, oh, yeah, yeah, Jujutsu yeah, yeah, guys yeah, yeah. and characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And there's like candidates one, two, three, but we don't know who's gonna get one, two, three. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. But we just like. Put, so it's like a guessing game. Yeah, but we're just like, hey, let's just have fun because we need to like placeholder it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so the first one we 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 put uh, Gojo and Geto. Second one is Sukuna and Megumi. Yeah. And the third one was Nanami and Haibara, right? Yeah. And it, that again, mind you, like we have no idea how the <laughs> PO number is gonna be like. Yeah. And we're like, oh, this is so funny. Yeah. Let's release it. Yeah. Right? And I think we released it after the KPU number yeah, was announced. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're like, hey, haha, you know, like back then, and we we're still like playing around. Uh, we placeholder it with Jujutsu Kaisen character, and it blew up, and people were like, oh wow, number, <laughs> number two as Sukuna and Megumi, yeah, like the old curse. Sukuna and Megumi, man. The the old curse yeah. with the Nepo baby. <laughs> yeah, man. But and it it yeah. just became a meme. Yeah, it became yeah. a meme. Uh, it, it became a meme. But looking from like a different perspective from what I said before regarding the uh, Fire Lord thingin, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
like one thing I would like to point out about our elections is the is the uh, what do you call that? It's the flexibility in all of it because you could literally like put different scenarios of like yeah, what, yeah, what do you yeah, call yeah. that? Like anime media and all all of that, and it would fit yeah. the narrative dari pemilu kita. Okay, that's that's one way to look at it. Yeah. Right? But the flip side to it, and this is me just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. It's maybe it's because. Our pemilu, our election, yeah. the, the characters uh-huh. or like the candidates yeah. are so archetypal. They're so archetype, yeah, archetype, yeah. They've got like a certain right? archetype, yeah. That it just like, oh my gosh, this is a set an SNL episode, you SNL know? episode, and that's Jesus why Christ, people yeah. are just like they're just begging for <laughs> us to meme them, and SNL. maybe it's because not all yeah. not all election are like yeah. this. Not all like yeah. the, like you you mentioned before like the US for example yeah like it's not as easy for you to like fit them into a popular culture like media yeah because narrative. both of them are geriatric fucks <laughs> exactly. yeah <laughs> yeah so like we have very very um fun characters in yeah, our election have... maybe so maybe that mm-hmm. makeup is very archetypal that. It is reflected in a lot of pop culture media, and people mm. are just like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This, this, this. It's just so it's just so fun to make like a lot of a lot of like uh, associations with of our you know of our even our presidents, not not just kaya apa, not just our presidential candidates, right. but also our presidents, right? Like, I like to <laughs> I like to tell you about the you know how you know before you know coming up to the elections all, all the way here, mm-hmm. there's been uh, talks that. Indonesian, sorry, not Indonesian. Sorry, okay. Masashi Kishimoto, the author of Naruto, mm. he based the entirety of the history of the uh, Konohagakure, mm-hmm. the the hidden leaf village, on Indonesia. Like a lot of people make that stupid chochoklogi, right? Okay. Including me. Because <laughs> I I, yeah. I I don't watch Naruto, but if you like list it out, there's some similarities with. Yeah, that. like okay, so. Yeah, I I I I reckon. Yeah, I'll explain to you like the similarities, right? Right. So. The first Hokage is Hashirama Senju. He's the founder of the village, and uh, he's a parallel to Sukarno, right? Mm. They're both charismatic, passionate characters. They're very associated with the color red. Mm-hmm. They're into social justice, etc., etc. And then you know uh, they have uh, throughout their um, throughout their twilight years, they become increasingly reliant on a very cold character. Mm. And that's Sukarno, <laughs> right? And also Hashirama Senju. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, the second Hokage is Tobirama Senju, right? He is, and he's a direct parallel to Suhardo. Mm. And Suhardo is this very cold, calculating character, you know? Like, mm. I wouldn't say like he's cold, calculating in a menacing kind of way, in a oh, every everything falls to plan kind of way, in the not in the way that Emperor Palpatine is, <laughs> right? You know Emperor Palpatine? Yeah. From Star Wars, no. Literally, the guy that, that has the hood and be like, <laughs> yeah. See, I I don't watch. Oh, Star you don't watch Wars. Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, we're uh, gonna have to like bring you up a picture. Like, I also I don't I don't watch Star Wars, Game of Thrones. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll explain to you. No, no, it's fine. yeah. Go ahead. So like, uh, he's not a um, uh, he's not a uh, he's not like the mastermind, but he's more of like I'm a cold ass motherfucker kind mm. of way. Yeah. And both of them have committed a lot of war crimes and a lot of atrocities under their uh, their regime, mm-hmm. right? And then the third one you have Hiruzen Sarutobi, right? And then the third one is Hiruzen. Oh, kakek ketiga tuh siapa ya? <laughs> Hiruzen kan ya? Yang kakek kakek kan ya? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, huh, huh. Did you want it? I feel like I'm getting so many spoilers right now. Right now, oh, you actually want to watch Naruto? I mean, I don't know. I feel like I need to at some point in my life because it's just like a, such a pop culture landmark that yeah, a lot of things. It is, that, yeah, yeah, but I, it's fine. Okay, I'll. Uh, no, it's fine. Just, I'll explain it to you without. Spoilers. I will. No, I will forget about because there's just too many. Yeah. Okay. After it's this, fine. we have like a Men in Black kind of thing. You just yep. have to look at it like that. Got yeah. it. Yep. Anyways, uh, the third Hokage is uh, Hiruzen Sarutobi, and he's a direct parallel to um, Abeji Habibi mm. because both of them are called the professors. <laughs> Abeji Habibi is an actual professor, yeah, and yeah, yeah. he's the smartest president. Yeah. Probably. And uh Hughes and Sarutobe, he's called the professor because he knows a lot of jutsus, right? 
Mm. He knows a lot of jutsus. And the fourth uh, Hokage is uh, Minato Namikaze, right? Mm-hmm. And and the fourth president of Indonesia is Abdurrahman Wahid. Mm-hmm. Both of them are very known to be uh, a humanistic kind of character, but that's the only thing that is uh, that is you know that okay. that has that they have in common. Nothing mm-hmm. else. The four, the uh, fifth Hokage is Tsunade Senju, and the uh, the the fifth uh, the fifth president of Indonesia is also female, right? Megawati Senju. So in, Wait, in Megaw- Naruto, the fifth Hokage is also female. Yes, the fifth Hokage is a female, that's and insane. so like the fifth president of Indonesia is that's, also a female, right? Okay, yeah, that's looking insane though. They are directly related to, <laughs> to the first Hokage. Okay. Really, I am okay. not kidding. Th- is that where the parallel ends, or is, is there? No. It keeps on going. It keeps on going. SBA. Yeah, yeah SBA is Kakashi. Uh, SBA, they're a former military man. They're mm. very talented, very brilliant. Uh, they lead a transitional era. Does Kakashi you know? paint? Does Kakashi paints? I don't think so, but he does sing, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, okay. man. Yeah, and then lastly, you have... Joko. <laughs> Joko as Naruto. Naruto. Yeah. I see. I couldn't really stress out why. I couldn't really stress out more why Joko is Naruto. But it's because, you know, he's a hero. Right. After yeah. Naruto who Who is president? She apparently in in the uh, new Boruto it's Shikamaru. Right. And, and Prabowo is supposed to be Sasuke. Right. <laughs> so so this that's is where, where the parallel ends. This is ends. where the parallel ends. Yeah. The curse is broke. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Right. That all all of the parallel ends right there. So don't you dare make more chochoklogi. We have agreed that Prabowo is Sasuke. He's not Shikamaru. So stop that. Well, again, right? Yeah. There's a saying how history rhymes. Yeah. And we see a lot of similarities with how our um, politics and election has unfolded just like the Philippines. Yes, Bamba Marcos and, and Sara Duterte. And so maybe like to a certain extent, you know, like the, the fiction mirrors reality in a sense like... Life oh, imitates art. Yeah, yeah. Like how oh, from this kind of leader, usually it'll lead to this kind of leader. Yeah. And then this kind of leader will have a ripple effect to this kind of leader. Yeah. Type of stuff. I'm not saying like yeah, yeah. this is a scientific basis to base your like yeah. political prediction on. I'm just like saying maybe it's it's not purely like chochoklogi or like a happy coincidence and stuff. Maybe it it is a pattern. There's it's a, a pattern. reflection. Yeah. It's a reflection. Things yeah. things like these are a reflection, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the parallel like doesn't end there in like the characters, but it. Tentang ideologi juga. Ideologi, because yeah. I I do believe how like g- great fiction can give you so much knowledge and window of knowledge about the real world, right? Yeah, yeah. And so. Yeah, man. But yeah, I seriously. mean, the the level of parallelism is still yeah. pretty creepy, but. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people can learn. Uh, so, like, if you ask a bog standard Indonesian, right? Mm. You unwashed masses uh, about Pancasila. Yeah. And they would, you know, they would just say the five things. Yeah. Sila pertama ketuanan ni maasa all the way to the five, right? But they wouldn't understand the meanings behind oh, yeah. it, right? I once did a video of uh, just like asking random people yeah. about. Uh, the fifth, the fifth sila, yang keadilan sosial bagi seluruh. Yeah, social justice. Social justice, right? So I, I asked them like, uh, sila kelima apa, blah blah blah. Artinya apa untuk kehidupan? Mm. And what did they say? Yeah, and like 90% of them couldn't answer. Couldn't answer. So they were just they're, like they were just like, uh, yeah, artinya ya yeah, keadilan sosial untuk semua orang apa? Oh, you know, right. they they can't really take the. They can't really ha- take the implication and application to like Oh artinya Semua orang nggak peduli agama Ras mereka Itu tuh harusnya sama di muka Iya sama uh, Hukum gitu yeah. Contohnya kayak ini nih They can't Iya yeah. Like 90% And that's when I realize like ya yeah, um, There's Again you know there's, there's learning to be enlightened and educated uh-huh. And then there's road memorization Yeah 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 And I feel like this is also a problem Dengan kebanyakan Gen Z Gen Z In that we we secara secara like in in a way in a theoretical way mm. 
we understand the principles, but we don't understand what the principles means towards us. You know? Yeah, and how you apply yeah. it in and real life. It's such a weird thing because a lot of my friends that watches Naruto, mm-hmm. they understand Pancasila because there is a lot of parallels with an ideology in Naruto called the Will mm-hmm. of Fire. Okay. Right, and the Will of Fire is like it's like Pancasila without the God aspect. Pretty much. Okay. It's about you know protecting your village, mm. you know passing down all blah 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 those shonen stereotype type of shit. There's Four. no five. It's just a oh. a will of fire is just a you know it's just a their ideology their their, their uh, village ideology village ideology. They're just like a rough cut of you know of what we as what we should do. But it's different in Pancasila in that it's an aspiration. But mm-hmm. they both expose the same, you know, the same morals like, oh yeah, social justice, etc., yeah. etc. Et and again, there certain values are universally praiseworthy, right? Yes, certain values are universally praiseworthy. Yeah, pretty much, man. So wait, wait, wait. Let me check the. Uh, we are talking so much about yeah. like anime. But going back, okay, that. going yeah. back to your first point, right? Yeah. How it's. It can be cringe and even worrisome mm-hmm. at some times that how yeah. people engage in politics, but only as far as this cocok logi thing. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. Uh. Yeah, and it it's fun for it. It's it's great for shits and giggles, but like at the yeah. end of the day, this is real life, and they're voting, there and it's affecting go. our lives. Yeah, right? there you go. And that's uh, that's where we should segue to the next like uh, to the next point that I want to make, which mm-hmm. is. Do you think that a lot of people base their political uh, opinions and also their political orientation or selections because of certain chochoklogi in a way that a lot of people uh, they vote for like say Jokowi because he's Naruto he's literally Naruto Damn I I, did, I never thought of that cuz I didn't know like cuz there are his, some people that are lineage parallels with Naruto Yeah cuz like there are some people that are you know kaya mm. they're That shallow, right. you know. I think there's probably some. Yeah. I don't know how to what extent, like how much. Yeah. But again, like how I mentioned, in the I think in the the election we just had. Yeah. This is the first election that are so saturated and embedded in social media. Because in 2019, I feel like the internet and social media penetration are, are not yet. As prevalent yes. as now, like yeah. TikTok is not yet as big as now. Mm. Uh, I think is IG Story already a thing. I think IG not yet. IG Story 2019. Not yet. It was already a thing, if I'm not no, mistaken. No, I, I feel like not yet. People are still using Snapchat, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yeah, so, you're right. So, uh, so Instagram is only feed. There's no reels, mm-hmm. right? So social media is not yet as sophisticated, I would mm-hmm. say. So this election is where the political theater. Merge with social media and like the the whole yeah. meme and the pop culture thing, and again like I feel like a lot of people are trying to engage with politics, and I get it, and it, it it's always a delicate balance between yeah it's it's great, but then what's next? Yeah, right? Because like if you stop at like haha Jokowi Naruto I'm gonna vote. <laughs> like <laughs> that's That's not gonna be good, but I would argue that that would still be a step better than those who have zero knowledge then in politics. Zero so political I've, literacy, right? Yeah. Exactly. So for for a lot of people, the steps are like zero political literacy, apathetic. You know, they choose whoever their parents are choosing or whoever looks yang cakep atau yang nggak mm-hmm. tahu apalah whatever. Yeah. And then the second one is maybe choosing based on. Superficial Dumb things Like Oh Jokowi Naruto You know Or like uh, mm. Anis Kayak K-pop You know And yeah, uh, Prabu Gemoy yeah, that, Thomas that's, Lembong Is an opa Exactly yeah. <laughs> So that's, that, that's For a lot of people Maybe that's a natural progression yeah. And then after that But at least Then They are engaged Yeah they are engaged And so to Get them to the next level Which is Okay, this is fun. Yeah. But <clears throat> remember, we're not choosing an idol. We're yeah, choosing a we're leader not, that's yeah, gonna leader. make regulation that's gonna govern your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you right. And that's just like another step above. So I still think it's progress uh-huh. because they're engaged at least. Then we, after they're engaged, we can educate, right? But mm. if for those who are completely disengaged, you need two steps before educating them. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? I see what you mean because uh, the thing about the thing about Indonesian politics is that uh, a cult of personality is a real thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like in you know because of a lack of critical thinking. Actually, gua kemarin itu gua ngundang si Kevin Wen kan. Mm-mm. You know him. Mm. He speaks a lot about you so highly. Yeah. No. And uh, we actually talked about you in our podcast for like. Five seconds, actually. Right. Yeah. So can't uh, wait to watch that. Just that five seconds. Yeah, man. That five seconds pretty much like sets the uh, sets one of the foundations of the conversation. But uh, as I continue, uh, gue itu ngobrol tentang uh, uh, ini. I was sharing him about how I had this one discussion in this one podcast called Forbidden Questions. Bagaimana orang Indonesia itu uh, mempunyai keyakinan yang sangat kuat. Hmm. Tapi pemahaman yang sangat rendah, mm. which leads to a lot of you know, kenapa logika mistika is very prevalent here in Indonesia, why people are very irrational, mm. why people are very shallow. It's because uh, cult of personality is a thing. Because there is a lack of critical thinking, we tend to idolize these politicians as something that are they're they they're gods among men. They walk above us. And we keep on electing people who we think is the better of us. Mm. Who we think these people are better than us. No, we don't elect politicians because they're better than us. We elect politicians because they can do the fucking job. Mm-hmm. That should be the principle, right? But the thing is, no, Indonesians, they keep on building this, you know, idolization of this one person, this one person, etc., 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 to the point where saying anything bad towards them or just giving oh, con- yeah. constructive criticism will be met with a lot of backlash but right is it is it because of logika mistika and the lack of education that these cults of personality arises because in a lot of more sophisticated like for example the US right the cult yeah, of yeah. is still a thing yes the cult of personality is still a thing in societies that lacks uh, a bit of critical thinking or where the critical mm-hmm. thinking is a bit lacking but I wasn't saying that logika mystica is the reason mm. I was just relating it's, it you know it's a factor maybe. that's a factor kaya maybe in it terjadi ini karena ada A tapi karena ada A juga terjadi ini mm. it's, a, it's a different thing it's a different factor yeah, yeah, yeah. but I was saying that uh, a lack of critical thinking leads to you know uh, strengthening of the cult of personality strengthening yeah yeah, yeah. sure and yeah. a lot of people back then uh, they keep on saying shit like oh yeah Joko is Naruto Joko is Naruto mm. but then when he does stuff that is you know that is kind of you know unfavorable right in a way that is uh, i'm not gonna talk shit about our president but you know from naruto to people calling him ken joko <laughs> i wish Jadi, i wish that reference is more popularly appreciated you you want to explain to me freaking like, brilliant you want to talk to me about you want to you you, you want to have a no, conversation okay just about finish that? your train of thought we're gonna like we're gonna ta- tangent so far if i start talking about that yeah man yeah like man later i mean but that's like the whole goal of the conversations for us to yeah. tangent about memes and shit okay yeah. but anyways but, like, let, me, let me yeah yeah just just finish your okay. your train of thought first so yeah man I think uh, I think we need to fix this okay. problem. Right. I don't know how we should fix the problem, but we should fix the problem. Yeah. So yeah. this is the this is the main thing that I learned from Bijak Mumili. Yeah. And we always in Bijak Mumili we call it an experiment, right? Yes. Because we would have this theory of change and this hip- hypothesis in the beginning, and then we test it out with Bijak Mumili during the election and see what comes out of it. Yes. And the hi- hypothesis and theory of change in Bijak Mumili mm-hmm. is that a lot of uh, voters or young people are uninformed. Because uh, there's a the access towards quality information are not that accessible, and so if we m- just make it accessible and interesting enough, they will learn. Mm-hmm. So that's that's like kind of the theory of change. And if they learn, then uh, they will make better decisions and thus create a momentum of change toward democracy and our politics. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So that's like a very simplistic version of in Bijak Mili, and we ha- we know that the threshold of change. For a nation to have systemic changes, when 3.5 percent of their citizens are actively engaged in something towards the same goal, so when that threshold is 
reach. This is according to Harvard research, by the way. Uh, so, for example, if 3.5% of the Indonesian population actively demanded that uh, Reddit got banned, misalnya. Oh, Usually yeah. that will happen. Yeah, man. So that's the research, right? Yeah, man. And so 3.5% of the population is around 10 jutaan, I would say. Lebih. Yeah. So that's the goal. Itu kayak targetnya bijak milih, but we didn't really reach that goal cuz kayak masih banyak. Anyway. Uh, but we learned that just educating the masses. Mm-hmm. First educating the masses are very hard. And people don't learn simply because information are accessible, like we or a little bit interesting. They people vote based on interest, mm, basically, yeah. right? And so there's the whole sector of like the demand. But then, if people are already ready to demand better, there needs to be a supply of politicians that are mm. willing to give better too. Yes. And so there's another sector which is the supply of future politician or, or leaders mm-hmm. if the supply of future politician and leaders are there but we need the institution to s- support them kaderisasi and things like so mm-hmm. partai politik kementerian the government things like that so the third sector is the institution and then lastly the fourth is the media mm-hmm. like if all three sector are already good but the media sucks then good policy will be told as bad policy and then people will end up uh, denying good policy you know like things yeah, become yeah, a mess I so get, there's like there's yeah, four get, yeah. basically yeah yeah and so mrs abigail and Mori, lee moria everyone explaining to you about agenda agenda setting and you know and uh, pushing policies from behind the shadows yeah, that's, <laughs> no it's yeah i mean so yeah. these so these four sector yeah. needs to be fixed or needs to be better in order for our democracy and politics to become better basically mm. and these four are kayak mereka tuh tergantung sama satu sama lain cuz mereka kasih insentif ke satu sama yeah, lain see, kan? yeah yeah so if you're saying like yeah we need to fix this there we need people intervening on all these four yes sectors but again you know like i feel like the first entry and if we're talking about the man right for the people the first entry is still we need to do whatever we can to pique their interests towards this monster called politics that are very very boring for that some are very boring to a lot of people yeah. you know and it takes a lot of brain power mm-hmm. to use the right to, to create like relevant memes to use the right pop culture reference but then use that gimmick as a gateway towards mm. quality education yes. i think that's the that's what's missing in a lot of things right there's yeah. a lot of great meme maker there's a lot of great people on twitter who makes a great threads mm, you know yeah. or like tiktoks or podcasts i don't know yeah. like you make a lot of shit posting too but yeah. can they use that talent as a gateway towards quality political education yeah political literacy but to be honest for me personally i'm just irresponsible as fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and i mean i feel like those to make that bridge of a connection yeah. requires different skill and different types of people yeah. so what's what's good is that or what's uh, ideal i think as people like you mm-hmm. who y- your you get off from making people laugh or making people like mad you yeah. know just like creating chaos with your meme or just yeah. like making people unsettled you know like but i i feel like you're doing it not just to create chaos but you you want to tell some truth that you've been frustrated for a long time uh, but a lot I of people so, are yeah. you, you know but you need to partner up with another person who can translate your chaosness oh yeah yeah into quality education yeah man and this this these people are usually technocrats who can't do what you do oh, right can't so do what i do yeah yeah so the, we require so these quality creative political education it's tough and it requires the collaboration of different types of people they're usually at the opposite side of the spectrum i would mm. say you know like um political nerds policy nerds meme so are lord, you are you, know. are you saying that me a meme lord i should get into politics and be uh you know be be friends with a few technocrats and yeah. masterminds yeah because you i think it's a shame if you create all these like funny memes and videos yeah but that those things are an end of itself uh-huh 
there needs to be a greater purpose behind, right? Yes. And so if you can collaborate with the right team and the right kind of people and create like a comprehensive ecosystem, uh-huh. I think that's that can really, really disrupt a lot of like the conventional education. And the way I see it, it's a way of making a new oligarchy. Maybe. Yes, man. And I see and I see it as this way. The oligarchy of the old is soon to be expired. Mm. It's only 20 years before they all become fucking paid you uh, geriatics anyways. They become senile old men, right? And it's time for us young people to rise up. Us meme lords, mm. political experts, who else? Uh, influencers. We all need to band together, take over the country from their hands. <laughs> That's what we should do. We mm-hmm. should become a new oligarchy. Mm. She is explaining you guys how to make an oligarchy. And I mean, one that's one. exactly. And I mean, in bijak memili, yeah, like in our ecosystem, that's what we try to do, right? We combine those chaotic energy of like memes yeah. and like pop culture, Twitter, like fandom yeah. thing, with. Sophisticated and comprehensive political analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. I can see it because I follow you guys, right? And that's like mm. one of the reasons why I follow you guys. Mm. Even when I go on your Discord server. Oh, like, in Wee Wee. Yeah, yeah, Wee Wee. Yeah, I go. Yeah, I go course, to. Yeah. I go to. I go to the Discord server. Right? I just lurk there. Like I just literally just lurk there, right? Jeez. And people there. People there are so substantive. I, yeah. I once <laughs> saw like a huge letter, right, detailing Grace Natalie. Like some some dude there was so thirsty over Grace Natalie, and he wrote like a huge ass paragraph, like why he likes Grace Natalie, and yeah. I think in a way, and I think in a I way I cannot be held accountable for whatever is said well, in the discourse. Well, of or course, just, of course not. Just because, putting it out there. Yeah, just putting it out there. It's right? a nation of its own. It's a it's a nation of its own. You can't really control what people I say nope. and feel. There's a lot of insane things that are happening there. That's right. You know, you can join the Discord. Link is on her uh, profile or in the wee 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 wee. Is wee, it on wee, the wee wee? Wee wee yeah. yeah. Yeah, wee wee profile. Pretty much, man. If you want to see the chaos unfolding, <laughs> but I keep on seeing like a lot of people mixing humor, memes, and and politics, and I see that's great. And the way I see it, yeah, mm. ini tuh mereka nggak cuma cuma ah ha ha hi doang. Yeah. Tapi behind the way they uh, they integrate humor and yeah. politics, there is uh, there is an intellectual mind. Of course, yeah. yeah. And even I think it's harder to do what they do as opposed to just write a dissertation, like a formal research paper on yeah. politics. You know, because like for you to be able to produce that level, for so for example, like one of my one thing that happened in the Discord is that they wrote. Are you actually in the Discord? Because I, I, I am. I am. I need to. Okay. I, I. I am sometimes, but I don't really say much. <laughs> anyway, us. Uh, there's one point where they wrote a fan fiction about. Uh, I forgot. RKUHP or KPK. I don't know. You know. They wrote a fan fiction. Dead ass. About Dead RKUHP. Ass yeah, yeah, yeah. They personified the regulation, things like that, and bro. There's a lot of things going on What? in that fan fiction, but for them to be able to distill the essence and to be able to <laughs> accurately distill bring, the essence, yeah, yeah, it. So they need to. So they first they need to understand it really well for them to be able yeah. to simplify it. Yeah, yeah. Then second, they need to abstract it into like this um, references. Yeah. And it, so that that's actually a highly intellectual piece of work. Yeah, that's a highly intellectual piece of work. Imagine a fanfic becoming a highly intellectual piece of work, guys. Smut. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, not gonna confirm yeah. or deny whether the existence of smut is there. Yeah. And I mean, they continue to amaze me at their level of abstraction and, you know, like yeah, man. word. And again, like it's it's really hard in Wee Wee. So in Wee Wee, we look for people who are We call them like chaotic but critical, so they they're good at like critically thinking and dissecting things, but they are chaotic enough to be able to abstract and mm, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. present it in a way yeah, that is yeah. still entertaining and funny and wild. Yeah, and those type of people who can do both are very, very rare. But I think these types of people, and I think you're included in them. I mean, I'm, I'm a chaotic. Um, 
am I chaotic? You are, uh, and I think <laughs> those this these people are what a lot of Indonesian youth need for them yeah, to be man. able as like to pick their interest. If I if I say so myself, uh, the good people we <laughs> sorry I broke yeah. character. The good people <laughs> sorry sorry okay damn I keep on breaking character man sorry. Okay, so the good people of the Weeboos of Chaos, right? Yeah. They are the kind of people that Indonesia needs now and then. In my opinion. Indonesia needs these sorts of people. They're the model citizens of Indonesia in the future. Yeah, as long, yeah. again, like I said, as long as they are embedded within a bigger uh, theory of change and yeah. ecosystem so that Once people are sucked in through their fan fiction, memes, jokes, references, yeah. they can. It's it's a mean towards a better political education. I see, I see, I see. You know? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, man. Indonesia Emas 2045 isinya orang-orang chaos semua dan weep. <laughs> Indonesia Emas ditopang sama <laughs> ditopang meme. Ditopang sama meme. Yep. It's pretty much like that, man. And uh, oh yeah, returning to uh, before we went on this like intellectual. Discourse about right. you know about Indonesians becoming meme lords as mm. a as a way to achieve Indonesia emas. Yes, yeah? I was about to ask you like you wanted to talk about the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen the Ken Joko meme. thing. Yeah, the Ken Joko Bro. thing. Man. You so gotta share it. Okay, yeah. so during the so during the election, as I was um, trying my best to do political education yeah. in Wiwi and Bijak Mili, right? I, I was scrolling to TikTok, came across this piece of art. This yeah, piece of art, man. And it's... I can tell that you're a connoisseur. <laughs> I am. Uh, and oh, I could not believe what I... So, okay, so for those of you who don't understand, so in Jujutsu Kaisen, Jujutsu Kaisen, Jujutsu Kaisen is an anime that has a very, very thriving fandom. Thriving and, and thirsty fandom. It's thriving. <laughs> <laughs> because they're thirsty, maybe. <laughs> and so here, the thing Gorgeous about Gorgeous a tall glass of drink, isn't he? <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. Sure. Uh, so the I'm trying to explain something that is just like so insane, but yeah. In in the manga, so it go it goes out weekly, right? Yeah. But usually the author, after like a massive update, they would go on like one week mm-hmm. hiatus. So that's like the mm-hmm. pattern. And so during the these hiatus. The audience would go insane because mm. they know that the next drop, something bad is gonna happen. Yeah. And so what happened during this hiatus? They would start making this edits of really, really brain rot TikTok. Brain edits of rot TikTok. Basically, like things that are so absurd that doesn't make sense. A lobotomy. Yeah, and kaisen. so it becomes lo- lobotomy kaizen edit. It becomes a genre of edit on its own. Yeah. And so what I encountered was a lobotomy kaizen edit, mm-hmm. but about our election the indonesian About election our election yeah yeah and i mean you can play it later if yeah, you want to yeah play it right it. here <laughs> and the amount of people that suddenly got engaged because of that edit and the 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 one who made the tiktok edit apparently knows about bijak mili mm-hmm. and so he would recommend so like people would comment like oh my god you're so funny and He would recommend people like, Oh, if you want to find out more You can visit this website mm. And it becomes an entry point Of yeah, people to yeah, learn yeah, more yeah, yeah. And that's just one crazy example Of how like A brain rot TikTok act edit of Jujutsu Kaisen Can actually be an entry point For people to become politically educated Yeah, he's doing his part He's doing his yeah. part Yeah, and those those edits are a work of art man. They're a work of art And I mean the second one uh, Another example that I would say is So everyone's probably aware About like the K-popification of Anis's Like fan base Yeah thing. also like Thomas Lembong Thomas Lembong a, a lot of people yeah, Keeps jadi, on saying that She looks like Thomas Lembong ga, yeah. And I, I'm suspicious I'm I'm at that level Where I'm suspicious That probably related <laughs> Okay. At, at this point I'm gonna, I'll just play along with it Okay uh, Yeah And A lot of them Are making like K-pop edits of Anis And blah yeah. blah But Somehow they would Then plug in Bijak Mumili Yeah And there, there when Anis Bubble uh, debut, yeah, debut. There's an uptick in our Bijak Mili like, uh-huh. visits apparently, because they put Bijak Mili in their 
uh, link in bio or something. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, like, after after that, uh, it just feels so gratifying mm-hmm. to have your answers be satisfied. Mm-hmm. After you know having so much questions racing around your mind after watching like that work of art of a meme, right? right? And I think I think another thing that a lot of that these uh, edits and memes are doing is that you consume political information with a somewhat positive mood, right? Yeah. But as opposed to like reading the news and it's all very cynical and negative mm-hmm. and pessimistic and fatalistic. But when you consume it through for for example like the K-pop fandom or the the lobotomy kaizen edit like you laugh. Yeah, you and laugh. you're become more receptive and more open towards new information. information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and also one of the things that I like to point out is that the way Uh, politics is being presented uh, through the usage of memes and edits and brain rot yeah. is is how it you know it corresponds with our humor mm-hmm. uh, especially late millennials and gen z's one thing i'd like to say about millennials is that they're they're kind of nihilistic and ex- existentialist right but mm. would you think so sure yeah uh i keep on seeing like I was on nine gag, right? I was on nine gag mm-hmm. in like uh, when I was young, when I was 13, I was on nine gag, and a lot of millennials were on nine gag as well. Yeah, and there was so many posts about how they hate life. Yeah, yeah, but it's so funny, you know, how they hate life. It's so funny. Nothing doesn't matter, right? And ini jadi turunan kepada Gen Z Gen Z nih. Okay. Yeah, Gen Zs they also hate life, but the thing, the way they're doing it, the approach that they're doing it is a bit different. Millennials are like, just take me already. Mm. But Gen Zs are like, take me already. Take me already. Yeah. 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 Like they're very, they're very. It's it's kayak nihilism and existentialism of the millennials. They you know they evolve into the Dadaism of <laughs> of Gen Zs. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So in a way. The surreal nature of you know Indonesian political memes, you know, it is a very good language uh, that a lot of Gen Zs would comprehend, which is why I feel like they're so open to it. Mm. And when they start asking questions about what the fuck is this, man? Yeah. You always have you know outlets, kayak bijak mili, total mm. politik, mm-hmm. etc., etc. You know that is uh, there to answer your questions. Yep. Pretty much that regarding memes, you know. But you know, I still like the fact that you know Joko, you went from Naruto to, to fucking Ken, Ken Joko. <laughs> yeah. So for context, for those who d- Spoiler alert! But for those yeah. who doesn't watch uh, Jujutsu, so there's a character called Kenjaku, and he's basically the mastermind behind the entire plot. Dude's a literal brain. It's literally a brain. Yeah, uh, I think the, the reason yeah. why Lobotomy Kaisen is named that uh, is because no, is because the, there's a brain, there's a talking brain. Maybe, but there's so many funny references in the Lobotomy Peel Press edit thing because there's yeah. like, so obviously Prabu is Sukuna. Yeah, and his. His domain expression is malevolent, malevolent mawar. Malwar- <laughs> insane! <laughs> My gosh, and uh, Gibran is mahoraga, which yeah. is a curse uh, that can adapt to anything. Uh-huh. And like in the edits, he can adapt through his MK power. Ah, uh, I see, I see. <laughs> which is that's insane. And. Chak Imin has the reverse slap attack. Oh my slap god! Attack. It's because. Like all of the characters have like curse technique. Yeah, I know curse technique. Yeah, so reverse slap it. Oh, jadi technique. kayak jadi skillnya gimana tuh? Kayak oh, tiba-tiba. So reverse curse, reverse curse technique kan untuk nyembuhin ya. Oh, jadi dia kalau misalkan nyelepet dirinya sendiri. Jadi sembuh gitu. I have no idea. Is he but, masochist? I have no idea. <laughs> but what? Guru ini iya, yeah. tapi ada kayak Shadow gitu. Shadow masochist lagi. And so it it comes in like episodes, right? <laughs> and the last, oh my gosh, the last episode was. The manga chapter of mm. when oh my gosh spoiler alert of when Gojo died and in the he literally became like, a mogus yeah yeah okay, a mogus after he died he there's an afterlife scene in the airport thing and so that's the edit that they use for mm-hmm. uh, Ganjar and Anis after they lose to Prabowo oh I see I see I see I see 
And I, I don't know, it's just like so brilliant. And the usage of AI as well. Yeah. You know, the usage exactly. of Exactly. Yes. Labs, I assume. Yeah, it's just so great. Yep. It's just that a lot of these, you know, uh, kaya with the advents of AIs and CapCut, et cetera, et cetera, like it makes it makes for a brilliant piece of art regarding memes. It's a brilliant piece of art. I will, yeah, definitely. Another one. So you know how like a lot of people are um, drawing, not drawing, like bilang bahwa uh-huh. ganjar mirip gojo. Ganjar. Simply because both of them has white, white hair. hair. They're tall. And I tweeted once, right? Because somebody was like, somebody tweeted to Ganjar, adiam aja gojo gitu. <laughs> And then I don't know why dia balas, yeah. dia quote retweet, yeah. pakai foto gojo gitu. Uh-huh. Kayak, ngomong apa ya? Ara-ara or something. Oh my god, man. <laughs> And the uh, Ganjar, bro, you naughty boy, bro. <laughs> and, right? Kayak, no way. The, the level of yeah. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Dasarnya And when I sudai. gila ya. And yeah. I saw that. Terus gue kau retweet. Uh-huh. Kayak them, my man Gojo Satoru who worked to like uh, reform the the corrupted Jujutsu world does not deserve this. Or oh something. my god! And I mean, man. it was just for a laugh. Yeah, it's just and for a laugh. And then he quote he quote retweet that Your, again. Yours? And then what Line. did he say? And it's like, jangan khawatir semangat anti korupsinya sama. <laughs> <laughs> I something. see, I see, I see. Oh my god! And gue tuh kayak, yeah. am I really having? An argument yeah. over a fictional character with, with a politician, with a presidential candidate presidential on candidate. Twitter. Like this level of political theater is insane. Yeah, it's insane. One can imagine, right? In about the next 10 years, 15 years, yeah. give or take, we're probably gonna have like two presidential debates over Discord. <laughs> Definitely, man. Yeah, oh yeah. Kita akan kita akan mempunyai kayak presidential apa? debate di Twitter. Nanti. Yeah, di Twitter atau enggak di Discord. Like literally, yeah. like presidents will be on Discord. Gua, I, I, I talk to my friends about this. Like the level of chronically online mm. we are, right? We we literally we would literally reach the age where kita G20 mm. itu enggak perlu ketemuan lagi lah di fucking Bali atau di India or in Italy or wherever. Ketemu aja di Discord <laughs> Buat aja server tuh Kan kocak tuh Bener Iya Maybe Play maybe. games man CS maybe. something Valorant Fucking Siege Among Us You know Among Us You know All of those games Yeah 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 I mean We talk so much about memes And how it affects uh, Our You know Our political views On Indonesia I just really hope that It just doesn't stop there Kayak orang ngebuat apa meme itu tuh nggak berhenti di meme aja tapi it becomes like a gateway as you say you know you're fulfilling the responsibility of the community this is how you build our great country of Indonesia mm. you make memes and then you lead them straight to her page yep. <laughs> exactly yeah exactly man yeah. but yeah man oh my god do you have anything you would like to talk about maybe any questions you'd like to ask or thing you'd like to say Hmm. Let me to eat the better as well. <laughs> Isn't this like? Doesn't it has a different brand? Seriously. Uh, okay. Are you talking about this bear? Yeah. Hmm? Is it rebranded? Hmm. Oh, I, I swear to God, I feel like there's a. Yeah. No, okay. Never hmm. mind. I see. I see. I see. Probably we'll save Very, it after, right? Mm-hmm. Okay then. Looks like we reach the end of our show day. It was a really substantive conversation with the legendary Mrs. <laughs> Abigail Lemuria right here, man. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, 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 man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mrs. Abigail Lemuria, is your is your are you Chinese? Yeah. Oh, Can, I see, I see, I see. Isn't it obvious? I oh. think that's why a lot of people think I'm related to Tom Lembong. Thomas Lembong is also Chinese, no? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I see, I see. I thought it was like because of the facial structure. I mean, sometimes you could be no Indian, but you can also look like a white guy as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I see, I see. Well, thank you very much for joining us today in the based Indonesian talks, Mrs. Abigail Amoria. And... Uh, 
stay tuned for the next episode of the Base Indonesian Talks. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below if you disagree with the both of us respectfully mm -hmm. and with civil ethics, mm. so to say. But yeah, I will see you in the next episode of the Based Indonesian Talks. Bye-bye, real Bye -bye. people. Or uh, Based Indonesians, or uh, I don't really have a name for my viewers yet, you know. The, so, the bassist. The bass lines. Bye-bye! <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> Subscribe to the Based Indonesian Show. Jamin Halal.